Hi, welcome to IST official YouTube channel. The session for today is regarding general management of poisoning. Any patient presenting to ER, may it be a, a patient with suspected overdose or a toxicological patient or any other patient, we usually start with assessing the patient's general condition. The key question we ask is whether the condition is life threatening or not. A life threatening condition can mean the patient might be in a cardiorespiratory arrest. Then of course you move on with the resuscitation up front. So the assessment begins with the classical A, B, C and D. So A for airway, the assessment and management of airway, B for breathing, C for assessment and management of circulation and D is there any depression of CNS. We will come on to the various aspects of what and how we assess each things. One of the key methods for assessment of sensorium or the conscious level which has been classically described is the Glasgow comma scale. You all know, most of you know about it. Classically it has been described in assessment of trauma patients but it has been extended to, uh, to assess in patients who are presenting with a drop in consciousness. The other score is REITS classification. We will see both of them. So the classical score of Glasgow comma scale to a score of 15. It has three basic parameters. You start with E. E is for eye opening. So whether the patient is opening his eye spontaneously, then the score is E4. If the patient is opening his eye to speech, it is E3. To pain is E2. And if there is no eye opening or no response, uh, uh, no eye scope, then it is E1. Moving on to motor score, if the patient obeys a command, a verbal command, then it is M6. If he localizes pain, it is M5. If there is withdrawal response to a stimulus, then it is M4. If there is abnormal flexion, it is M3. And if it extends to a stimulus of pain, it is M2. And if there is no response, it is M1. So an I score of E21, E4 to E1 and a motor score of M6 to M1. Then you have the verbal response, that is a V. So if the patient is fully oriented, you give a score of V5. If it's confused conversation, it is V4. If the patient is uh, saying inappropriate words, it is V3. Incomprehensible sounds, it's V2. And if there is no response, it's usually equated as V1. So a Glasgow comma score can have values of E, M and V and ranging from 3 to 15, that is 3 could be a deeply comatose patient to 15 which is a fully conscious patient. But another popular uh, classification is the REITS classification which ranges from group 0 to group 1 to 2 to 3. So group 0 is basically arousable, group 1 he responds to painful stimuli and have intact reflexes, group 2 do not respond to painful stimuli, most reflexes are normal and group 3 do not respond to pain, painful stimuli and most reflexes are absent. So this is the REITS classification of comatose patient and group 4 is a patient who is deeply comatose with respiratory and circulatory failure. So it is group 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Moving on to further assessments, you have to assess the respiratory system. So the adjuvants to respiratory system usually comes in with uh, the measurement of blood pH. Uh, a PCO2 level and bicarbonate level. Usually these three values you will get with uh, what is called as the blood gas analysis itself. So you get the uh, pH level, you get the PCO2 level and you get the bicarbonate level. And other common uh, thing which can be tried is a right spirometer. Moving on to cardiac status, the key parameters we assess in the cardiac status is the patient's pulse, uh, the blood pressure and the urinary output. So we will see what are the drugs which, which uh, influence all these parameters. First regarding the cardiac status. So the key parameter in cardiac status is the heart rate. So there can be a rapid heart rate or tachycardia or a slow heart rate uh, called bradycardia. So for tachycardia some of the common drugs which can cause or uh, toxins which can cause uh, tachycardia are alcohol, datura, nicotine and salicylates and sympathomimetic drugs. And bradycardia common things you need to keep in mind is organophosphates, opiates, Digitalis and aconite. Moving on, what are the drugs which can affect the blood pressure? So again hypertension and hypotension. Hypertension the common drugs will include cocaine, nicotine, amphetamines 
and in hypotension you can remember diuretics, ethanol, opiates, sedatives and hypnotics and also uh, as common sense says a overdose of antihypertensives and also antipsychotics. So that is regarding the heart rate and blood pressure. The other parameter which can help us uh, assist regarding uh, the cardiac status or the ca cardiovascular status is the urine output. So if there is decrease in urine output or liguria, then the common drugs you need to keep in mind are barbiturates, carbolic acids, ethylene glycol, oxalic acid, salicylates and sulfonamides. And the key parameter is in change in body temperature. So what are the common drugs which can cause either hyperthermia or hypothermia? So for hypothermia, the common drugs would include CNS depressants, opiates, carbon monoxide, barbiturates and anesthetic agents. And hyperthermia can be caused by cocaine, salicylate, phenothiazines and also amphetamines and anticholinergics. So that is drugs which cause hypothermia and hyperthermia. Another very very important both in clinical aspect and also from an exam point of view is eye changes. So you have your pupillary status that is uh, a dilatation of the pupil or a constriction of the pupil. So let us see what are the common drugs which causes meiosis. Uh, some of the common things which you need to keep in mind are barbiturates, caffeine, uh, chloral hydrate, ergot, nicotine, opiates, organophosphorus and phenol. The common among them is going to be your organophosphates. Mitriasis, the drugs which can cause mitriasis are alcohol, amphetamine, antihistamines, botulin toxin, carbon monoxide again, cocaine, uh, cyanide, datura and ephedrine. So these are some of the drugs which can cause meiosis and mitriasis. And then there is a popular question of what causes hippus or dancing pupils that is uh, changing between mitriasis and meiosis. So the answer for that will be aconite, it is not something which we very commonly see in clinical practice though. Another common question which can come up is uh, based upon the breath order. Uh, so if you have a garlicky order, uh, it could be suggestive of organophosphorus or uh, thallium or arsenic. Uh, uh, then if you have a sweet or fruity order, it can be uh, suggestive of ethanol or chloroform of nitrates, bitter almonds uh, is usually suggestive of cyanide poisoning and fishy order for zinc phosphate and uh, so forth and so on. Uh, the other important parameter which uh, comes into consideration will be the color of the urine. Uh, which again uh, the classical thing which you need to remember is the red color of uh, uh, rifampicin and smoky of phenols and the green color or the blue color of uh, methylene blue and the green color in propofol. So these are just uh, some of the key questions which can be answered I mean which can come up in the exams. And the very very important thing from a clinical perspective is uh, metabolic acidosis. So basically you have a low pH and a low bicarbonate uh, in your blood gas. So what are, the, what are the common causes of metabolic acidosis in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in, the, in the purview of a toxicological patient or a, a toxicological victim? So you have your acetyl sal uh, salicylic acid, you have carbolic acid, ethanol, ethylene glycol, isopropanol, methanol, oxalic acid and sulfonamides. The key thing here to remember is regarding the anion gap. So uh, the classically it causes the high anion gap acidosis. So uh, as you all know a pH less than 7.35 is usually considered as acidosis and you calculate the anion gap by calculating the sodium plus potassium minus bicarbonate plus chloride. Uh, the normal range is between 12 to 6 and if the value is more than that we call usually call it as HAGMA or a gap acidosis or high anion gap acidosis. And the mnemonic commonly used to uh, uh, remember the causes of uh, uh, HAGMA is mud pies. So M for methanol, U for uremia, D for diabetes, P for paraldehyde or fenformin, uh, I for idiopathic lactic acidosis, iron and isony acid, E for ethanol, ethylene glycol, S for salicylates, solvents and starvation. So this is a, a, a very very important the perspective of exam and also in clinical practice. So moving on to the other general management of poisoning. So, uh, so as we told an assessment of patient's condition is very important and moving on to the general treatment measures we start with again the respiratory failure you clear your airway you can see the picture at the uh, right upper corner which is head tilt so what usually happens is as the patient's sensorium goes down the tongue may fall back and, and can obstruct the airway so it's clearing the airway is very very uh, important uh, in the management 
um, uh, management uh, of the patient. So you position the patient correctly, you can use adjuvants like an oropharyngeal airway which can aid uh, 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 to keep the airway patent or open. If there is pooling of secretions, you can aspirate the secretions and of course, if, if the conscious level is low and the respiration is compromised, we move on with what is called as endotracheal intubation with a cuffed tube and to secure the airway. Uh, yes, if the patient is having a, a, a low oxygen level or hypoxemic, uh, we can move on with oxygen therapy. Uh, the other or if the PCO2 is high, usually it warrants an intubation especially when the patient's uh, conscious level is low, but if the patient's conscious level is okay, we can try with non-invasive ventilation also. There is classical concept of analeptics, but it has very, very uh, 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 minimal clinical value as, as we stand today. Moving on to circulatory failure, yes, it's it's uh, very important to correct the acidemia. So as we discussed earlier, uh, the patients with uh, with uh, 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 with a uh, drug overdose or uh, uh, ingestion of toxins can present with acidosis also. It is uh, key to correct the acidosis, especially uh, we will see in the coming slides how uh, what are what are recommended for the same. Other thing is, is uh, to keep the patient on a Trendelenburg position once the BP is low. Moving on to plasma expanders and also vasopressors. So this is uh, the classical Trendelenburg position. If the patient is hypovolemic, we keep the patient in a Trendelenburg position to uh, and uh, assess for the change in blood pressure. And the next thing is, I, I briefly mentioned about uh, bicarbonate also. So bicarbonate, uh, if the pH is less than 7.1, uh, there can be an indication for bicarbonate. But if the acidosis is not getting corrected with the bicarbonate, then we might need to move on with other measures including hemodialysis. And if the BP is not improving in spite of adequate volume resuscitation, of course, uh, vasopressors might be uh, needed uh, in the management of the patients. So another key thing in the management in ER itself is the management of hypothermia. So mild cases can be managed with warm uh, room and blanket. Severe cases might require active reheating including warm water bath or central core heating. If the patient is hyperthermic, of course, uh, uh, you need external cooling measures like ice, cold water bath, uh, apart from pharmacological interventions. Uh, so this is again uh, regarding the management uh, of uh, metabolic acidosis, which I had mentioned already, and management of convulsions. Yes, as you all know, toxicological patients can present with uh, uh, symptoms of convulsions. So uh, you manage with your diazepam, which can be given IV, IM, or perrectally. And if it is refractory, move on to phenytoin and follow the classical management of uh, seizures in any other patient. So at times, uh, the seizure may be so much severe that it might impede with your ventilation. In those situations, we might also consider paralytics to, uh, to uh, help in uh, controlling the seizures. Moving on, uh, but always remember the other measures, adjuvant measures, uh, which include correction of fluids and electrolyte disturbances and also other supportive and nursing care. So that was a quick overview of uh, the general management of uh, a poisoning patient. But in the next session, we will move on and discuss in detail the general management of poisoning with specifics to decontamination, including emesis, gastric lavage, uh, activated charcoal, uh, forced diuresis, catharsis, and also hemodialysis, hemoperfusion, and exchange transfusion. Um, I specifically thank VU Placer for this uh, for this uh, uh, PowerPoint and also all inputs from the uh, academic team of IST. Thank you.